Uh, so I'm here to talk about the optimal algorithm for Bayesian incentive compatible exploration. And this is a joint work with my advisor, Shai Mansour. So uh, let's start with an example. Say I want to drive from Stanford to Berkeley. And there are two alternatives, road A and road B. Out of which, road B is usually faster. It usually takes one hour, as opposed to road A that usually takes two hours. But when you open up your navigation app, it suddenly tell you, tells you that you should uh, drive from road A. Now, I'm not sure about you, but I usually follow recommendations from the navigation app, and not just to avoid getting lost. The thing is that the app knows something that I don't. It knows the current delays on the road, which in our case, the actual uh, delays might be a bit different than they usually are. And road B had a huge traffic jam that would have uh, taken me three hours to drive. But for the app to get this information regarding the current delays, it needs to sometimes sacrifice users and to send them uh, to explore the a priori slower roads. Fortunately for the app, the users don't know if they are getting a re recommendations to explore the a priori slower road uh, or exploit the knowledge from the previous users. And uh, to, so the app, the one thing that the app needs to notice is that it won't send the same user to explore again and again. So the goal of the app is to balance between, uh, sorry, uh, the app needs to balance between the probability that each user explores the a priori slower roads and exploits the existing knowledge regarding the, uh, the current delays. This must be done in a way that the expected time on the road won't increase for any of its users. And this is what we call Bayesian incentive compatible constraints. The goal of the app is to minimize the accumulated delays of the users, aka maximizing the social welfare. The only tool that it has is information asymmetry, and it is expressed in a way that every time the app sends a recommendation, it can, it can then observe uh, the current delay on the road by the user that chose to drive from this road. Uh, so as for related work, uh, the first uh, model was introduced by uh, Kramer, Mansour, and Perry in, uh, to, in uh, 2013 here in EC, and uh, they derived uh, an optimal uh, pol policy for uh, two deterministic actions. Uh, it was later extended in several directions. So uh, there were a uh, case of stochastic actions, unlike the uh, determinic, deterministic actions in the original model. Uh, and in this paper, they also derived the tight asymptotic uh, regret uh, bound for stochastic actions and uh, uh, introduced a reduction from any non bayesian incentive compatible policy to a bayesian incentive compatible one. Uh, there was a work on uh, multi-agent uh, gain in each time step and uh, work on uh, two competing planners. And there, there is another uh, line of works that handles uh, a model with monetary transfers. Our result is an optimal Bayesian incentive compatible uh, algorithm for the planner that handles any number of deterministic actions. So instead of two, we have an optimal algorithm for any number of uh, actions with, restric with restricted settings. So the a priori best action has a, a support of either minus one, zero, or one. This is the discrete version. And, uh, con and uh, we can we also show in the paper how to handle any continuous uh, distribution with support between minus one and one for the a priori uh, best action. And all the other actions can only have two possible reward, which are, which are either minus one or one. Our algorithm uh, handles any number of agents. It minimizes the exploration time of each action independently, and as a, a result, gets uh, maximum social welfare. So how do we model such a problem? We use multi-arm multi -arm bandit, which is a well-known subject in uh, machine learning, operation research, and economics. 
Uh, it goes like this. We have k different actions, so you can think about the action as an arm, arms of uh, slot machines in a casino with unknown rewards. There is one planner that in each, in each time step selects uh, an action, and the goal of the planner is to maximize the accumulate reward, accumulated reward. Now, this must be done in a way that balances exploration and exploitation. So exploration for finding out more uh, information regarding the uh, rewards distributions and exploitation in a way that it, it can uh, gain a, a reward by uh, using the information that he already has. But in our case, there is no one planner that can select whatever action uh, that you want, but instead there is a planner that can recommend actions and the agents can choose whether or not to follow. So our interaction goes like this. In every time step T, a new selfish agent T arrives, and the agent is selfish in a way that he won't follow a recommendation that won't benefit with him, the Bayesian incentive compatible uh, constraint. Now, the agent is aware of the prior distribution and his place in line. So uh, in the Stanford the, to Berkeley case, uh, you probably know what are the usual delays on these roads. So just like this, our agents are aware of the prior distribution. The agent then uh, receives a recommendation from the planner. Let's say he received a recommendation to go for action number two. And he can then decide whether or not to follow. In our case, agent T decided to follow. Uh, he then receives a reward which is drawn once from the prior distribution DJ. So let's say the reward was uh, plus one. And he, he has a utility function of ut of j, which is uh, equal to the uh, reward he just received. Uh, he then leaves. And uh, the next one would be a, uh, will be a different uh, agent. Uh, the planner gets to observe what, uh, what reward was uh, xj. And this is the only extra information the planner has. So both the planner and the agents are aware of the prior distribution and the, the place in line. But uh, the, the planner gets to observe the realizations of the reward. So next time uh, a new selfish agent t plus 1 arrives, and let's say he receives the same recommendation and also chooses to follow, then he would receive exactly the same reward. This is why the actions are deterministic. So formally, a strategy for the planner is a recommendation policy pi, which is based on historical rewards and can be stochastic. Now, a recommendation sigma t is Bayesian incentive compatible if the expected difference between the utility from following it and the utility of any other action, given the agent's knowledge, is never negative. Uh, and notice that this BIC constraint can be uh, calculated by the agents, and that the agents are unaware of previous recommendations, previous chosen actions, and previous rewards. The social welfare of a Bayesian incentive compatible policy is simply the expected cumulative reward of all the agents. So in case we handle a Bayesian incentive compatible policy, uh, we can simply assume that uh, all the agents follow their recommendations. And we can uh, define the social welfare as the expected cumulative reward. The goal is to design a Bayesian incentive compatible policy for the planner that maximizes uh, the social welfare. So let's talk a little bit about a prior distribution. As I've said, there is a restricted prior. So let's restrict it even more and see why it's too simple to handle such a simple prior. So consider uh, a case where each action has a support of minus one and one only. And let's assume without loss of generality that uh, the, all of the prior expected rewards are between zero and minus one, and the prior expected reward of uh, action one is uh, higher than the prior expected reward 
of action 2 and so on. In this case, when the first agent arrives, since he is aware that he is the first agent, he won't follow any other recommendation but a recommendation for action number one. So the planner must send a recommendation for action number one. Now, the planner can observe the reward. If it's plus one, then everybody is happy because the planner can simply go on and recommend everyone you should take action number one, it has the best possible reward. If it's not, it's then uh, better to recommend action number two because uh, the prior expected reward of action number two is higher than minus one, and so on. So this is uh, very simple, and today we'll, uh, I'll show what happens if the support of the, of the a priori best action, action number one, is minus one, zero, or plus one, and uh, I'll show uh, examples for three actions, but in the paper, as I've said, uh, there is any continuous distribution with support between minus one and one for uh, action number one and k actions. So uh, let, let's make sure we're on the same page regarding the prior distribution. So the first action uh, can have rewards of plus one, zero, and minus one. And the second and third action can only have rewards of plus one or minus one. So how do we create this uh, optimal policy in this case? We start by uh, uh, doing an abstraction. So we notice that uh, uh, in each time t, the only information which is relevant is the, no, the known and unknown rewards. It doesn't matter who was the agent that explored action number two, it only matters that it has a certain reward. So we map uh, the realizations of the reward into in an information state. For example, if the first action has a, re a reward of uh, zero and the rest of the rewards are still unknown, we map it into uh, information state ST, which is zero star star. Now, um, the one interesting thing is that we just saw uh, how to handle a case where there's only minus one or plus one rewards. So if it's not the case, if it's any other information state, the, planner, the social planner already, already knows what to do. It, it can recommend based on the previous reward. So if, for example, if the first action received a reward of plus one, he would then recommend it to everyone. So the only interesting uh, case in, uh, in three actions and uh, uh, discrete uh, rewards is the case of uh, this information state, zero star star. And in this case, we, uh, what we do is we can calculate the maximum exploration rates for every action J and every agent T. Now, exploration rates are the uh, highest possible probability that a planner can recommend agent T to explore action J uh, while still uh, uh, being base and incentive compatible. So for example, the, the planner can never recommend action number three to, agent, uh, to the second agent because the second agent, the agent know that the first agent selected the action number one and that the second action is, uh, has a prior expected uh, reward which is bigger than uh, the prior expected reward of the third action. But the thing is, in order to get the maximum social welfare and all these other uh, nice properties, we need to maximize all the exploration rates at the same time. So for this, we use a randomization technique, which allows us to choose uh, which agent, uh, which, which agent would uh, explore each action. So the thing is, if you, if you wouldn't have uh, correlated the, the randomization, we might end up in a case where, okay, we use the exploration rates, we guarantee that we are BIC, but uh, agent number three uh, was selected to explore both actions number three and action number four. In this case, we would have to uh, choose one of them and to waste a little bit of the uh, exploration rates. So we, we want to prev uh, avoid this. And so the correlated randomization works like this. 
we show several properties regarding the exploration rates that allows us, by, a sampling, by sampling a single parameter y, which is selected uh, at uniform, at, sorry, by a single parameter y that is selected at random from a uniform distribution between zero and one, and uh, by choosing this uh, parameter, we can then decide which uh, agent would explore each action and to avoid collusions. And a nice uh, an additional property is that uh, by doing this, uh, we can explore the actions from the, high, from the a priori highest expected reward to the lowest. Uh, this also allows us to show that our policy is stochastic dominant over any other BIC policy. And by this I mean that uh, the probability that uh, uh, our, the suggested policy has already explored action J at time T is uh, not less than any other uh, Bayesian incentive compatible policy. And uh, there is one uh, pair of agent in the time t in which it is strictly higher. Uh, we can also show that, the pro that by summing up all of the exploration rate uh, of uh, one action, we get the probability that uh, the action before it uh, didn't get uh, the optimal reward. And it, uh, this uh, allows us to show that uh, uh, when, if we have enough uh, agents, then if the uh, first action, for example, is not optimal, then we would eventually explore action number two. And if action number two also has a reward of minus one, we would uh, eventually explore action number three. And of course, it goes on for k actions. So to summarize, uh, we've seen uh, how to incentivize exploration uh, by, uh, via Bayesian persuasion. We show, in, the, in the full paper, there is uh, two dif different supports for the a priori best action. So it's discrete and continuous. And uh, in both settings, the optimal policy explores the better a priori actions earlier, uh, maximizes the exploration rate independently, uh, requires the, this uh, interesting correlated uh, randomization. And uh, if we have enough uh, agents, then we we can make sure that we reach a, a terminal state, which is either a optimal reward has been found or, or that all of the rewards are known. And as for open problems, so the natural one would be to extend the support of all the actions to be between minus one and one. Uh, another interesting uh, way to develop it, it is to consider a stochastic actions or to enable agents to receive limited amount of information about the best. Thank you very much. <laughs>